This is Twit. Ah, deep fakes. Um, I love talking about deep fakes. I'm fascinated by them. Often when we think about uh, these things, we immediately think of images of people who don't actually exist or video of people who do actually exist, but doing things they didn't actually do. Uh, well, researchers are apparently, they're, they're taking time to look into and ponder the possible effects of deep faked geography, which is something I hadn't really considered before uh, today, before reading this article. Uh, initially, I read, read an article on The Verge that caught my attention about this. And that is artificially, artificial intelligence uh, crea uh, creations of cityscapes, of landscapes, and you know, of, of things that are maybe they're purported to be actual satellite imagery. And you may be wondering, well, what's, what's the harm in that? Like, the world is large. There are a whole lot of areas that look a, a whole lot of ways. Why does it matter if there's a tree over there or, or whatever the case may be? Um, but I think it's a really interesting kind of thing to take a look at, especially as people aren't aware of what could possibly happen out of this so that we can move forward in this world of, of deep fake technology and protect against it, right? So for example, creating hysteria around things like wildfires in an area where none exists or, you know, pretty much the same with, with any natural disaster. Uh, geopolitical risks, misleading certain governments into maybe an unnecessary action or, or leading them into inaction based on some sort of satellite imagery that, uh, you know, that is uh, faked. For example, satellite imagery of China's uh, Uyghur uh, detention camps. You know, Chinese government could claim them to be faked uh, as deep faked geography becomes just more prevalent. And I think that's that's kind of what I find really fascinating about deep fakes. Outside of the sheer kind of capability of, of what's happening with the technology and just how good it's getting at faking things. But often the threat isn't that this actually fake thing that you're looking at could be seen as real, right? Like that's, that's uh, it, it's fake, but it could be real. It's the other way around. What, what if what you're looking at is proof that anything that you look at is at least plausibly unreal? So it's the doubt that it seeds into the landscape. It's not necessarily that it's convincing you that this fake thing is real. It's that when we know that we can fake something so that it looks real, then anything that is real is doubtable. <laughs> and that's the really scary thing, right? And, and uh, so I, I, I get... I go down these wormholes when I think of uh, deep fake technology and it's, and uh, you know, I've, I find myself kind of conflicted with it because I'm totally fascinated by the potential and the possibility of deep fake and artificial intelligence and, and what it can do with, you know, we've talked many times on the show about creativity and everything like that. And so on one hand, I want for it to be fostered from that perspective. Cause I'd never, I never considered just how powerful a tool this could be for some so many things that are positive, but the negative sides of these are equally as you know as as dire, let's say by comparison, and have the potential to do a whole lot of bad things depending on whose hands it falls into. Um, I don't know. I, like I have more on this, but uh, what what do you think about the potential of deep fake uh, geography? Is that anything you've ever thought about or considered before, Micah? <laughs> Honestly, no. So I, I mean, I've always just focused on uh, the deep fakes. I, and I think that part of that is because that's the virality uh, yes. of it is, is deep fakes surrounding people. Um, and, and, and those kinds of situations where you are, it, it, I guess it gets to like, what is the goal of a deep fake? And what we've seen so far is to kind of impersonate a person uh, to try and, and you know, make a person say something that they didn't say or do something that they didn't do. And so thinking about a whole nother level of deep fake uh, is pretty concerning um, and also just kind of makes you go, great, now that's one more thing I can't just trust to be accurate. You can't uh, just trust. Accurate. Right. Yeah. Right. Ugh, verifying things is even more difficult than it ever has been. <laughs> yeah, well, and and along along those lines, the um, the people who created uh, who who kind of led this research uh, was led by Bo Zhao. He's an assistant professor of geography at the University of Washington. 
they researched this topic uh, deeply, but they also created detection software for it, which we've, you know, we've seen and heard about detection software for deep fakes when it comes to kind of uh, face portraits and that sort of stuff. There's software that exists in order to create it because to the human eye, it's very difficult to look at some of these images um, and see immediately that something looks out of place. At least with a human face, at least there are clues that we can we can like clue into. And right? Be like, oh, why There's is the still- reflection in the eye over here on this eyeball and straightforward on this one? That you know, and whether we yes. whether we recognize it or not, that doesn't sit right, and that creates kind of our doubt of trust in that particular fake faked image. Well, there's software that can do that for you. That's way more. Um, way, way better at it than we are by looking at it with geography. It's a little different with geography. It's like, uh, I don't know. It just looks like a bunch of trees. It's not like you knew that that one tree was not supposed to be there. It was actually over here. Um, especially given that they're already low quality images. Like we're used to just low quality images. That's true. That's a really good point. Yeah. I don't, it's it's not in the same way where with humans, yeah, there's an uncanny valley situation and oftentimes you can just tell a little bit. Um, but yeah, with this, it's like you're already looking at those CAPTCHA style images where is that a totally. fire hydrant? I'm not sure if I should <laughs> click on that. <laughs> is that a bus? <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently their software, you know, analyzes texture, color, contrast and things like that. The big challenge for software that does this, though, is that it's really an arms race, right? Deepfake right. technology continues to be to progress and get better and better. And I have to imagine at a certain point, deepfake technology is going to solve the eyeball problem, you know, the reflection. They're going to figure that out. And so the people maintaining these detection algorithms, they also need to keep on it, keep developing it so that it stays up to date with the current trends that are happening. It's a total arms race. Um that was interesting. It also kind of made me think a little bit about just like historically, just the fact that uh, geographic data has been fabricated in in many ways. Specifically, map data has has for so long been very inaccurate. That the world map that we're so used to seeing that we were taught in schools and everything is actually not a correct representation of the world. From, from my understanding, you know the, yeah. the size of the U.S. when compared to all the other continents and everything on the standard world map that you see, everything is skewed to make the U.S. seem bigger and bolder by comparison. But when you take a look at a different representation, like the Gulf. Peter's projection map, you get a better sense of kind of the proper scale by comparison. You end up seeing that the United States and Canada and everything is really squished and kind of small compared to a lot of other continents that are way larger uh, by comparison. And this is just something that we're kind of instructed and taught in schools. And we don't question because we don't know to question. And thankfully now with the internet, you know, we know more about that sort of thing. But um, so this isn't uncommon to be to be faking uh, geographic information. It's just another way to do it, I suppose. That's a really good point. Um, historically, it's always th- there are some really funny maps. Uh, I can't remember. I've seen them on Tumblr. I've seen them occasionally on Twitter and sometimes on Reddit and the rare time I dip my toe into those choppy waters where it's a map. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Where it's a map somewhere that is just depending on where it is, their country is like super huge and everybody else's are really shrunk down. Yeah. Historically, that's kind of always been a factor. Um, But it is interesting uh, to, to kind of compare that these sort of deep fakes have always existed and are so insidious. I mean, it's uh, in my mind, I have this picture of what the United States looks like in comparison to some of the other countries. And Mm -hmm. by God, they make Africa so small in these maps that I've, you know, grown up looking at in geography classes and stuff. Uh, It's kind of wild. (laughs) It is. Yeah. So this is actually the Gall Peters projection, which is just one of the alternative maps that attempts to, um, attempts to scale things at a, at a more even, uh, scale. And, uh, like, Australia is that big. Are you serious? Yeah. You know right. I mean? Exactly. Exactly. It's crazy when you, when you look at it this way and you're like, okay, yeah, this looks very different from what I was, what I was taught as a kid and yeah. what we're still u- very used to seeing in a, in a common way. So, 
Anyways, so it's nothing new. It's just the new technology way of faking our geography. <laughs> Everything's fake and nothing is real. Yay. That's my jingle. That's my jingle for, <laughs> for the for this millennia. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. I wonder when we'll when we'll move beyond that to a different paradigm. I don't know. <laughs>